Hello, I'm Stephen Childs of virtualvoicelessons.net, and I would like to welcome you to part two in our series entitled Vocal Performance in Sickness and in Health. As singers, almost all of us will find ourselves in a situation where we have a show or audition coming up, and right before, we start to feel the effects of sickness come on. This is the biggest fear that we have as singers and is one of the biggest pitfalls of being a singer. In fact, I would venture to say that no instrument suffers the same fate from being sick as the voice does. One can certainly play guitar, piano, or drums, even with a fever if they had to. The same is not true for singers. I have witnessed artists over and over throughout the years who have prepared for so long and worked so hard for a big performance only to discover a day or two before that they were developing a sore throat and found it difficult to talk, let alone sing. The fact of the matter is, we all get sick. It's a fact of life. And according to Murphy's Law, if you have an important show coming up, you will start feeling a sickness coming on. This is even medically true to some degree because when we overly prepare for a show without giving ourselves adequate rest, we keep the throat in a worn down state which can leave it susceptible to infections. But fortunately, there are many different things that we can do to properly prepare ahead of time to prevent unnecessary sickness, or at least make our voices usable even with the sickness. I would first like to say that contrary to what most of us assume, the vast majority of throat and chest infections start with the sinuses first. So what this tells us, if we concentrate the thrust of our healing onto the sinuses themselves, we can in fact stop the severity of secondary infections of the throat. Now, we have several sinus cavities in our faces, the largest being right behind and in the center of our eye sockets. This is known as the maxillary sinuses and is part of the entire group called the paranasal sinuses. These openings have several purposes, including making our heads lighter. But for us as singers, they do in fact act as resonating chambers within the face. Remember, open space and hard walls. Now, what happens is the sinuses are always producing mucus that traps and drags particles out of these openings. In fact, most of us pass around a quart of phlegm down our throat every night. Now, for some reason, the drainage of these sinuses becomes inhibited, either by swelling, drying, or actual blockage from foreign particles and allergens. This is why allergy sufferers have runny noses, because the body is trying to flush out whatever is irritating it. It is when the drainage is overwhelmed that it becomes backed up. Now, whenever mucus builds up inside of the sinuses, it unfortunately becomes a breeding ground for bacteria. And it's this thick, bacteria-filled mucus that now slowly drips onto the back of the throat, causing it to also become infected. As it works its way down into the chest, we then develop chest infections as well. And that's how it goes. Now, the goal for us is threefold. We need to thin out the mucus so that it can properly drain. We need to clean the infected area. And we also need to maintain a healthy amount of moisture inside the sinuses so they don't dry out. There are a few great ways to do this, and I'm going to share three of them with you right now. One of the most effective and cheapest preventatives for sinusitis is the proper use of nasal saline spray. It is available to anyone, really at any drugstore. It is simply a bottle of pure water mixed with salt. What the nasal saline spray does is act like a lavage, which literally cleans the sinuses and then keeps them moist. And salt, again, provides a hostile environment for bacteria. This would be my first choice for you as a singer who is nearing a performance rather than a decongestant spray alone. Decongestants have the one bad attribute for singers, 
which is they dry us out. That's actually their job. It dries the mucus and therefore stops the dripping. But unfortunately, singers need a lot of moisture to make the vocal cords vibrate correctly. And like many treatments in Western medicine, it only masks the symptoms rather than eliminating them. To clean the sinuses is the answer and can and should be part of our everyday hygiene. Remember, when I said that singers need to adopt some lifestyle changes in order to be the best they can be, well, sinus cleansing is certainly one of them. On a day-to-day -day basis, the nasal saline sprays are great as a moisturizer and just require one or two inhales into the sinuses. Now, with an actual developing illness, it is not just a matter of spraying it into the nose a couple times. There are actually a, a technique to it that I would like to lay out for you right now. What we need to do is to spray the saline into the nostril as we deeply inhale. And we need to do this several times until the saline starts dripping down the back of our throat. We should then blow out the saline and repeat the entire process up to three times. And when that is done, repeat it in our other nostril and the entire procedure thing then can be repeated up to four times a day, depending on the person. So we are actually cleaning the ethmoid and maxillary sinuses, thinning out the mucus and allowing for better drainage. Neti pots have finally become more and more popular over the years and have always been recommended by me as a nasal lavage system. They have been in use for many, many years as part of the yoga lifestyle. It is simply a pot with a long, thin spout. The user adds a mixture of distilled warm water with kosher salt. Now the technique for using the neti pot requires some getting used to, as we have to tilt the head forward and to the side a little to prevent it from coming down our throat. But what happens when we use it correctly is that the water enters into one nostril and drains out the other. After the solution dries out, we refill it and do the other side. This causes a steady stream of water that has some pressure behind it to flush out the infectious material from the maxillary sinuses. Fortunately for us, these pots are also sold in most drugstores and are relatively inexpensive. And best of all, the salt now comes in the proper dosage in small sealed packets. And at first, may feel a little weird, but trust me, it will pass in a matter of seconds, and the feeling you will have afterwards will be an openness you never felt inside your face before. And to have an open airway into the nose is extremely important in preventing sore throats. When we sleep with a stuffy nose, we are forced to breathe only through our mouth, which further dries it out, causing friction. Remember, also, this is an excellent way to prevent allergy attacks as well as sinus infections. If we help the body flush out whatever is irritating the sinuses, whether it's pollen or cat dander or whatever, the less reaction we will have to those irritants. One very ancient method of opening the sinuses is also, in my opinion, one of the very best. This is the age-old home remedy of inhaling steam. The idea is simple. A little heat mixed with moisture will break up any hard mucus that is blocking the osteum tube from draining the sinuses properly and also aids in maintaining a degree of moisture within the cavity itself. Interestingly, inhaling steam's main purpose has always been to alleviate mucus buildup in the chest during the course of a chest infection. And it is, in my opinion, again, a very effective means of reducing coughing attacks outside of conventional cough medicines. Again, many cough suppressants are great, but they dry us out, which is detrimental to the act of singing during performances. So in other words, it has a dual purpose and should be absolutely used as part of alleviating the effects 
of these type of symptoms. Now, here is how you should go about doing your steam inhales. First, I would like to say that simply running the shower and sitting there while inhaling the steam is not good enough. This will have some benefits, but it's not nearly as much as you would if you were to take the time to do true steam inhales. It is minimally effective because it is not intense enough to break down mucus buildup. By the time the steam reaches the sinuses, it is too cool to do much of anything besides add moisture, which again, in and of itself, is very important. But what you need to do is fill a large pot with hot water from your household faucet. If you put hot water in there beforehand, it will reach the near boiling point that we are after much faster. After the water reaches a near boiling point, you would carefully place a pot onto a table and then you can add any liquid or paste medications that contain eucalyptus oil, such as Vicks Vapor Rub. We usually recommend a teaspoon or less. Now, at this point, you would simply place a towel or small blanket over your head and start inhaling into your mouth and out your nose. You can do this for a few minutes several times a day. We highly recommend not inhaling directly into the nose and this can have adverse effects to the soft membranes lining the nasal walls. You will find a very fast relief of sinus congestion as well as loosening the phlegm within the chest itself. Once again, I would like to remind you to be very careful while moving around your steam pot as it doesn't take much to accidentally spill the hot water and scald yourself. Now, there's also one other very old effective means of reducing and even preventing the effects of sinus related sickness, which is gargling salt water. And this is something that can be done even moments before performance. As a matter of fact, I carry a bag with me to every show that contains my microphone, throat sprays, and a little bottle filled with iodized salt. What I may do is go into the bathroom with a cup filled with as near hot water as I can get and dump some salt water into the cup. The amount of salt may vary, but it's, if it's too much, you will know it as it's simply too harsh to keep in your mouth. Too much salt can cause a drying of the soft tissue and should be avoided. So, we take a mouthful of water and start to gargle on low pitches. And just like the hums that you may now do, lower means slower. Towards the end of this therapy, it's a good idea to gargle then on high pitches as this is a good medium to warm up the vocal cords for high singing. I usually finish at about an eight ounce glass of salt water solution and afterwards the feeling is incredible. Salt naturally draws out water and reduces edema, which is the swelling of the vocal cords and surrounding tissue. With this reduction of edema, the voice can then bounce back from being unresponsive to very controllable. I've even seen singers who cannot even speak gargle for a few minutes and go on to sing their entire set. So the results can be quite amazing. Now, as I had mentioned, there are some throat sprays that are available to singers, such as Entertainer Secret, that act as a lubricant on the vocal cords themselves. They usually contain ingredients such as aloe, which helps reduce friction and keeps the vocal folds moist. There are many throat sprays meant specifically for singers, each with their own type of herbal ingredients. But it really will be up to you to see which one works best for your voice. Throat lozenges are also a very effective ways to keep the voice lubricated and are very soothing, but I do not recommend these before a show as they often leave a thick coating on the vocal cords which inhibits their vibratory action. Now we have all heard how very important drinking water is for all of us. It is the most needed substance for us as human beings next to oxygen. Our body simply cannot function correctly without water, even on a day-to-day -day basis, let alone when we're fighting an illness. Just a 2% drop in water intake causes the beginnings of dehydration 
And for us as singers, this drop is more common than for non-singers. Think of this. All of us have been outside during the winter months and have been able to see our own breath as it leaves our mouths. The reason for this is simple. What we are seeing is frozen water vapor. So in other words, every time we exhale, we are losing moisture from our bodies. Now think of how large the plume of frozen water vapor is when we exhale on a cold winter morning. Also think of how often we exhale. Now think of how much more and how much greater the exhalation is for the singer. Singing is exhaling and we do it far more often and with greater force than the average person by far. So for us, we absolutely must intake at the very least eight eight ounce glasses of water a day. And this is not ice cold water, but room temperature water, as cold water constricts blood vessels and shocks our organs. It also keeps us from warming up before or during shows as well. Now, when you are sick, the amount should increase as your body needs that water to combat its illness. It is the basis for saliva. It keeps the body temperature regulated and helps the brain itself to operate correctly as the brain is made up of 95% water. And we as singers need to be on the top of our game on stage, to be alert and focused. So all of this is just a reminder. We need to drink at the very least eight, eight ounce glasses of water a day and greatly increase it during illness. So here are just a few ways that we can drastically help our voices from succumbing to the effects of common sinus-related sicknesses before they actually get out of hand. There are a couple things that I want to stress before we end today's lesson. First of all, the therapies that we discussed today are far more effective as a preventative means to help us not to get sick rather than a way to quickly get rid of a sickness when it's already bad. There is no magic cure as of yet that can instantly remove these illnesses. All we can hope for is to prevent them at best as we can. And if it is an issue already, then this is a means to speeding up the recovery. I would also like to mention that this should not be in place of any medications that were recommended by your doctor or pharmacist. Just let them know that you are a vocalist and you don't want any meds that can negatively affect the voice. There are great medications out there and new developments every day to help us with these type of illnesses. You just need to be cautious of using some meds like decongestants before a show, as again, it has a drying effect on the throat. But just to reiterate, all of this goes along with the five Ps. Proper preparation prevents poor performance. Now, there are some remedies I would not use on a daily basis. I would not use steam inhales as an everyday activity, but certainly when you are at the beginning or during sickness. Saltwater gargles is another. As far as the neti pot is concerned, I would use it at the most once a day when you're not sick. Nasal sprays such as nasal saline can be used throughout the day, but just one or two sprays that are not blown out into a tissue. It needs to be used more as a moisturizer rather than a cleanser. Too much salt can be harmful to the membranes lining the sinuses, and there needs to be some degree of caution while using salt-based remedies. Remember, everyone is different, and you need to see what amounts of these therapies works best for you. I am Stephen Childs of virtualvoicelessons.net, and I'd like to say thank you for listening, and God bless.